This is a beginning tutorial on machine learning with LSTM networks. They're very good for predicting a sequence of events, like if you have a sentence and you want to try to complete the sentence, it's going to look at the first part of the sentence and then uh, predict the next words. In this case, we're going to predict something that's a sine wave, and we're going to look at the preceding data points and try to predict what is the next x value. So uh, if you want to follow along with the source code, it's right here. I'll put a link in the video as well. And we're going to be working with this. Uh, this is a unit cell of the LSTM network, where these are going to be our additional inputs. And then this is going to be the thing that we're predicting forward. And it goes through these sigmoid functions, hyperbolic tangent, another sigmoid. And each of these have the effect of propagating this long-term information. What were the prior sequence of, of inputs? Uh, what were the prior se uh, sequence of predictions? And then we're going to make a new prediction uh, based on that. So similar to time series models like ARX or others that we use, but this one is going to be a be able to capture some of the nonlinearity in our process. Okay, so their special type of recurrent neural network, it's structured to remember and predict based on these long-term dependencies. And uh, one of the weaknesses of LSTM is like context. So convolutional neural networks have, in many applications, replaced LSTM when you have information uh, before and after the LSTM. Like in a sentence, you want to understand the context of a word. You look at the words before and after, and then it helps you understand the context. Now in time series data, you don't necessarily have that luxury of being able to have something after. You're sequence uh, marches forward in time and you're trying to predict the next values. So um, anyway, let's get into the uh, into this. We have a couple steps that we like to go through whenever we do uh, machine learning. They're detailed here. Consolidation, data cleansing, inputs and outputs, scaling, training, and validation. So we're going to go through a lot of those steps here. We're just going to start with, um, let's just start with data generation. I just gave myself some data. Uh, this one is going to be a uh, sine wave. Okay, and I'm going to generate between 0 and 20 pi. I'm going to generate that with 500 data points. So a lot of data there just with a sine wave. And now we're going to prepare that data. Um, we're going to set a window of past points for the LSTM model. So how many time points back are we looking? And we'll do a window of 10 time points. Now we're splitting the data 80, 20 into the train and test. OK, so I'm going to look at the last, uh, the last 80% and split it into the train and test. Okay, and then store window with number of points as a sequence. Now this is a little bit um, complicated. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this, let's see, I'm gonna put this over here just to be able to write it out and explain it a little bit more. Uh, we're basically just stacking the input sequence. Um, okay, we're gonna stack them uh, on top of each other, so we're going to get, let me see if I can get this back here, okay. Okay, we're stacking them on top of each other, so if we have data like this, we have time, and then we have our y value, okay, we're going to take um, these time right here, these time points, these y time points, and then predict the next one and then we're going to take the next set okay and put that right here and then predict the next one right there and then we're going to keep going down take the next in this case it's going to be 10 and then we're going to predict the next one right there so 
here are the inputs uh, to our model and then the output is on this side and we're going to create this with a lot of duplicated data here so so this value right here is going to fall off uh, but this value is going to be the same as this one this one is going to be the same as that one and so on okay and uh, this one will fall off and we will repeat a lot of the data so storing this is going to be very inefficient in terms of there's just a lot of repeated data but um, we're just going to do that because it's not that much data in this case but for large scale data you got to be a little bit more creative about how you store this uh, especially if there's there are memory issues okay so i'm going to append this window and then I'll reshape the data into a format that the LSTM model needs. And okay, so here is my reshaped data um, into this form. So let's run this first one. I'll generate some data. And then let's go ahead and just reshape it into this other form. And let's just print. Uh, we'll print x1. Uh, let's see. I'll print x in here and let's print the first uh, let's see okay first few rows you can see those stacked you can see this value came down right here and this value came down right here so a lot of repeated data there all right, and then afterwards, if I print x in, okay, I'll just copy this down here, and let's print that. Okay, you can see that it's going to be uh, just reshaped in a form that it needs it with the 10 values here, okay, are going to then predict uh, the outcome right here. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and, oh no, this is the next X is uh, right there. These are all inputs um, on this side. Okay, so let's go down to, uh, ooh, that's a lot of them there. Let me go ahead and just delete that and run it again. Okay, so let's go down to the model structure now. So model structure, we're just need a, uh, some of these Keras libraries. Keras is like an interface to TensorFlow. Helps us so we don't have to write some of the detailed uh, detailed instructions for TensorFlow. It abstracts a lot of those. All right, and you can get that with pip install Keras. That Keras is not going to come standard, at least now, with uh, Anaconda, so you have to pip install it. If you don't have it, just come to Anaconda prompt, and you can do pip install Keras. And if you don't have admin privileges, just do uh, put user there okay and that'll help you install it okay we want to initialize the LSTM model structure form we're going to create a sequential model and we're going to add an LSTM with in this case 50 units um, all right and then return sequence is uh, equals true and then I have my input shape uh, as I show right here these are all important to be able to on this just this first layer. You'll see another layer where we don't have those uh, same options. And we're going to add another LSTM with 50 units, and then we need some dropout, okay, to have uh, uh, this is like a forgetting. And then we're going to go on to another dense. This is going to be our output layer, and just unit uh, one and compile with atom optimizer and then with mean squared error as our loss or objective function the thing that we're going to monitor as we go to determine how well it fits the data all right uh, let's go ahead and do this one this is going to solve fairly quickly it's using a tensorflow backend and then we'll see it start to optimize okay actually we're going to do that on the next one which is going to be fitting that we just built our model right here all right and let's fit our, our LSTM model our history um, 
is going to be equal to fit. We're going to put in the x in and then next x. And then the epics are the number of iterations. Batch size is 50. And we'll just say verbose is 0. If you set that equal to 1, you'll be able to see a little bit more information. All right. Um, all right, so here it is. I'll just change that to 1 for right now, just so we can see it as it's training. All right, it's fairly quick, uh, fairly small data set. I'm not running on a GPU or anything like that, just on my uh, CPU here. And you can see that it's uh, done. And then it's going to create a plot for me. So let me come down here. Uh, okay, so if you turn verbose to 0, you don't get all this print out there. But here is the loss function with the number of epics. So you could uh, you could see that you know we had fairly good fit even after 20, uh, but we went on to uh, 50. All right, um, let's go on to validation now. So validation now we have a trained model and we want to be able to test it on that 20% of the data that we didn't use for training. Okay, now here's x in and next x1, and I'm going to do the same uh, window thing that we did in terms of constructing the data values, and also the next x1 values as well. And I'll reshape uh, both of those into the form that, um, into the form that it expects. All right, and then I'll predict the next value. Now I only need to do one predict, okay, call because it has it in the form that's going to do all the predictions all at once. And then I'll create a plot with LSTM and then actual. All right, so here it is. And this one is a little bit deceptive because, um, you know, we're just taking the prior 10 data points, the measured data points, and then predicting the next uh, model uh, data point. So um, the reason why that's a little bit deceptive is because um, you know I'm taking these these ten, and it doesn't have that much chance to change very much because it's basically telling you the correct answers here and asking you know, what's the next one. And you could always say you could even have a model that says. Well, I'm always going to be the same as data point number 10. And it's going to look pretty good, but it's going to predict really poorly. Okay, so it's going to predict like that. And you could have 10 more. And it says, I want to predict like that. And it's actually going to be just a little bit off. Okay, it'll be off uh, this way, I guess. And so your prediction would look something like this. Even though it's a terrible predictor, it's just going to be delayed by 1. And um, all right, something like that. And you'd say, wow, that's an amazing prediction. But in fact, it's a terrible prediction. So let's do another one where we do a forecast, where we don't use the measured values to predict the next prediction. OK, uh, the next, we're going to use a forecast instead to use the the predicted values to calculate the next prediction. All right, so we need to just rearrange our data a little bit more. We have to do a loop now because we only want to calculate one at a time because you need those calculations to predict the next one. All right, so this is going to be in range window to the length of x predictions. And we're going to do x in is just going to do that uh, window of 10 data points. And I'll reshape that into the form that uh, Keras needs. And then I'll predict that. And then it's going to go back now. And it's going to use that new prediction with i as one more and do that all over again. So it's just going to time step through your model and be able to get based on a, uh, the predictions, not based on any of the measurements. Okay. All right, so we're going to plot this and then see how well it actually does at uh, forecasting. And so you can see there's a little bit more deviation here, but it does get 
the cyclical nature of the data. You could consider other forms of this as well. You know, if you have something that's, that repeats, you could use a seasonal ARIMA model, or there are some others that are perhaps better with repeat cycles. Um, but this one looks like it does a fairly good job of predicting. Um, it would be interesting to take that out even further and see if that deviation continues to grow or if it um, you know, levels out at about that uh, level of error. Okay, so we're just using the first 10 data points here to start the predictions and then everything after that is just based on the predictions. We're not using the blue dots anymore to, um, sorry, we're not using the orange dots anymore uh, to be able to predict our blue dots. Okay, the blue dots are gonna be independent. All right, um, so that is it for the simple sign tutorial. And let me just give you a quick overview of what we're gonna be doing next. This is gonna be an LSTM model that we're gonna be applying with the temperature control lab. So if you come down in this uh, course, apmonitor.com slash do, and then this is the LSTM networks, and you'll see the information here on LSTM. And if you go down to the bottom, we're gonna be doing next this, this exercise with the temperature control lab. And uh, this is gonna apply something to real data uh, we're going to use a larger data set to train it and uh, see if we come up with uh, similarly good results as we did with our, our sign test.